Well, now that we've gone over the uh, user interface and gone through the wonderful, exciting world of settings, now's the time for us to actually start to bring some assets in and let's start using them and, and get down to editing. So this first section that we're going to be going into, of course, is bringing in the footage that you're shooting with. Now, I know some of you do know what tape is, and so that's the first thing that I am going to do here. And then we're going to go on into the source browser and regular bin and show how to bring everything else in. Now, remember I told you when we were talking about the graphical user interface that the player or the source window is where we are going to capture from tape. It's not a whole different setup. And it's a very simple process. Right now we have a DV camera hooked up to the computer with a tape in it. And so what we're going to do is, is that I just come up to capture and select input device. Now I've already selected DV and I want to show you this right now that I can right click on it and then assign this to a preset. And I've already assigned it to input preset 2. But basically what that means is that a button will be down on my window that I can just press it and then from now on I don't have to go in and select the device. It'll just automatically select that DV. As you can see, it's sitting right there. There's going to be a little bit of music here and you're going to hear my good friend Tim Kolb's voice. This is his video, but let's say I'm just going to play through this and watch. My ears used to be big enough to fan And let's say that I want endpoint the there. Nothing is actually hopping. Okay. Stand corrected. And then place an output out point right there. Now, what I've done is I used the I and the O key to select my in and out because the in button's kind of hidden right here. But now that I've set that in and out, I can now go to the down arrow here and I'm going to say capture. It's going to ask me for my file name because I set this up at the very beginning. I always use the user bit as the real name so I don't sit there and name it, although you could name it yourself if you wanted to. And then when I select OK, this window pops up. Now what's going to happen with this window is, is it's going to pre-roll the tape. It's going to go back to my endpoint, but go back a little bit before it, because remember the handle or the margin that I set on it. And then it's going to come back in. I'm going to move this window over so you can see. Used to be big enough to fan myself like that. Here are the kangaroos where nothing is actually hopping. Oh, I stand corrected. Now, as you could see, it pre rolled at five seconds as set in my settings. Then it started to capture two seconds before my endpoint. It showed me the percentage of time, and then it captured a few seconds afterwards. Notice, though, that there are three different clips here. The reason being is, is because we left it to where I wanted it to separate the files out by time code or by date and timestamp. So now I have these three different clips that are ready to use inside of my bin window and they're captured on the hard drive. However, this is not the video we're going to be using. So I'm going to go ahead and just select these guys, right click and delete them. So they're not in my bin window anymore. But this is how you capture from tape. Now you can go through, by the way, by capturing with tape and hit an in and out and instead of stopping it, you can just say add to batch capture list. So basically by hitting control B after I hit IO and then control B, it will just add it to a list and I can go through the entire tape and just keep adding ins and outs. And then at the end, I can go into capture and then capture my batch capture and it will go back and it will literally go in and do that rewind pre-roll capture two seconds before, capture between my in and out for every single one that I do. Basically, guys, that's how you capture with tape. Edius takes control of the uh, uh, playback device and allows you to be able to work very, very quickly. One other thing I want to show you with this, and it's going to be, I think, kind of loud, so I'm going to turn down the volume here. I'm going to go ahead and do it directly to the timeline. So I'm going to go ahead and just keep playing, and I'm going to set an in and out, and I'm going to drop it onto the timeline instead of just stopping it and say capture and put it on the in the bin. So let's say that I want it to drop right there on my timeline. I'm going to go ahead and play. I'm going to set my in. Set my out, and now this time I'm going to say I want to insert it onto the timeline. Once again, it allows me to name it if I want to. Here it comes up and the uh, playback device is going to rewind. It's going to pre-roll for five seconds. It's going to capture and then you're going to see that between my in and out are going to end up on the timeline exactly where I wanted it to be. Here you see it's starting to pre-roll. Then you'll see the red come up. 
it's telling me the remaining time and what uh, what percentage it is. And as soon as it's done, it'll drop it in the bin window, but also place it directly on the timeline. For those of you who are used to linear editing and uh, being able to set ins and outs and then doing an insert edit, this is exactly how you do it right here. You can do it off of tape in Edius basically the same way that you were doing tape to tape before. So anyway, that's what I wanted to show you, and that's the tape part of it. And once again, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these. What if I'm shooting file-based? Now, file-based is the way that most people are shooting today. Now, if you're shooting with something like AVC HD or MPEG or something of that nature, which really doesn't have a file structure, I can just go directly into the bin window. I can right-click and say Add File, or I can just double-click with the left mouse button. I can go uh, to my desktop where my footage is. I'm going to take a look at my Edius project. And inside of my news footage here, I've got uh, M2TS, an AVC HD. All I do is select it. It drops it straight into the bin window. I'm ready to start editing on it that quick. But not all file-based is exactly that way. What if I need to get a Sony EX and I have it on a card, and it has several folders sitting inside of it, or a P2 or something of that nature, AVC Entra 50 or 100. Well, you'll notice that when I go to the source browser here, that down the left-hand side, it's showing me all the different codecs that can be read. I want to do XDCAM EX. Now, this is how hard it is. I've got a reader plugged into the computer, and now I'm going to put the card into the reader. Now, watch what happens when the computer sees the reader and then turns around and sees that there is a file structure there for my XDCAM EX. See how it changed? Now, automatically, and I'm going to go ahead and close this out, but automatically it gave it a drive letter, and there's my Sony EX footage sitting right there. Now, what I can do with this Sony EX footage, or if it's XD regular, XD camera, it's going to work the same no matter what kind of codec it is. I can right-click on this and say Add to Bin and edit directly off the card if I want to. Or I can add and transfer to Bin, meaning that immediately it will show up. I'll start being able to edit on it immediately. But it's also in the background going to be copying it off the card and onto my computer, meaning that once it's through transferring it, that card can be popped out and somebody can go shoot on it again, and it doesn't have to be sitting there anymore. If I only want pieces of it, let's say that you shot two hours and you only want a couple of minutes, then right here from the source browser, I would take it over into the player window. And remember in the settings when I sat there and said partial transfer. So let's say I set an in and set an out right there. The minute I take that down to the timeline, it is going to start copying. Notice right down here, it's waiting. Basically already copied it because it was so fast and it was such a short clip. But what it did was, is it took from that in and out that I set, the minute I put it on the timeline, and it copied in its native format. It didn't transcode it. It copied it onto the hard drive into my project folder. Now, the reason why I left it going into the project folder is this. If I'm working, and I need to take that project with me and work on it with a laptop somewhere, everything that I'm working on is inside that project folder. So I can copy that project folder to a external drive, take it with me anywhere and open this project from any computer that has EDIA 6.5 on it. Like if I took it home and I had a computer I was working at home or I was going on the road and I wanted to work on this project while I was on the road, I can open that project up from that external drive, have everything that I need because all the transfers I did all went into my project drive. And this is basically the three different ways that you bring it in. One, by tape. Two, like I said before, it's just into the bin if it's just a normal single file situation. Or three, I can go into my source browser and be able to bring it in if it's one of those codecs. Like I said, AVC Entra 50, 100, XDCAM, XDCAM EX. I can bring it in there very, very quickly, start editing on it immediately, either off of its original media, or I can edit on it while it's copying from off that original media onto the hard drive. And that's the way you bring footage into the program.